Okay, in this video I'm just going to talk about um, using a flash on the Panasonic GH6. So, um, a lot of people kind of disregard the, the photo qualities of um, the GH line of cameras. You know, they, they sort of say they're all video focused, they're not so good for, um, for photography. And um, I'll be honest, I mean, coming as someone that's come from full frame, you know, a while back and then came to the GH5 and... You know, there are a lot of reasons for that and, you know, some of the main ones are just because uh, for me quite often I'm kind of shooting solo and um, being able to carry, you know, more gear at the same weight for me is it's just, you know, that's like an invaluable thing. If I can have more tools to do the job, then, you know, great. But um, it, it's essentially, you know, obviously at the, the weight comes the trade-off of with these cameras, you've got smaller sensors and the ice the iso on um you know shooting photos or even video it, it can creep up incredibly high in you know not even particularly sort of challenging situations so um you know if you if you're using manual modes or you're um even in some of the semi uh, auto modes there are kind of ways around it and you know you can get creative with ways to reduce noise but um, for, for photography, I think um, people quite often will just take a couple shots out of the camera and just think, ah, okay, that's that's not very good, you know, do it in um, aperture priority or shutter priority. It's, um, yeah, there, there can be a lot of noise in shots. So what I would always recommend for photography, if you can, uh, is to get an external flash because um, it, it's going to make a massive difference, you know. <laughs> it's just like, it's the equivalent of, um, you know, if you shoot video and you just never use lights it's kind of um, or you know you never uh, utilize kind of outdoor light it's just um, you need light to basically keep a lot of that noise from your shots so um, if I um, what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a just a really quick demo of like you know what I'm talking about with this because it's essentially um, it's not going to be perfect, the shots won't look the same, but it's just a good example of what I mean. So if we switch the camera on and we're just in, uh, we're in shutter priority mode. Uh, oh, sorry, the camera's decided not to focus. Let me just lock that on. Okay, so we're in um, shutter priority. And then what we'll do is we'll put the, put the flash on the top so it just slides onto the hot shoe. Screw it on. And then for this one, we just hold it down. But what I'm going to do on this quickly is have this one off. And I'm just going to take one shot. Um, I've got a fairly long lens on here. So I'm just going to take a shot of a roller cord that's on my shelf up here. And then I'm going to do one with the flash on. And I'm like I say, I'm sat in a fairly... You know, it's it's daylight in here, but it's quite it is quite a dark room. But I do have one light on, so uh, sorry, let's leave that off. Take that off there, and then we can quickly look at the shot. So um, we've got our first shot um, here. So it's the camera has been left to its own devices for um, ISO. So it shot it at ISO eight hundred, which. Um, isn't quite as bad as it was before. We've got like a bit of um, bright sun coming through the window, whereas before it was a bit cloudy and it was shooting it more at about 2,000, so pretty high. Um, but you know, even um, ISO 800 is fairly high for the kind of situation we're in. But then if we switch into the next image, we're at um, ISO 100. And like I said, say probably the more visually pleasing image is the one without the flash because um, it it's just picked up the, the you know it's i'd say it's more well rounded and a bit sort of better exposed there's obviously you know we shoot in raw we can do so much with this as long as we're fairly accurate with where we want to be with exposure there's a lot we can do um but you can see what i mean you know th this is now iso 100 so the noise in this shot is going to be greatly reduced from this one 800's really not pushing the limits but like i say i'm in a fairly well lit room here anyway and the sun's just sort of started to shine through the window. But you, you can see, you know, if we're shooting in quite dark conditions, we're, we're probably going to be more from like 4,000 back down to, you know, pretty low. We can do a lot of things in ISO 100 with um, with an external flash on. So, uh, like I say, the, the, you're not always going to get the most pleasing image straight away. I mean, if you're used to bridge cameras or you're used to 
even shooting on a phone, you know, having an internal flash is generally there. Um, but when you come up to some of these cameras, um, I mean, even actually a lot of APS-C cameras have um, uh, have built-in flashes, or they used to. Uh, but they'd still have a hot shoe, so you could sort of override it with an external uh, flash as well. So um, if you're sort of, um, you know, not used to not having one, or sorry, if you're used to having like a built-in one, then um, it's obviously useful to be able to kind of get a flash for this now. So um, I'd always advise people kind of do it. Like I say, they're not always the most pleasing shots. For me, um, I don't really like shots that are just kind of, you know, sat like that. It's just sort of face on. That's not really a proper diffuser. It's just a piece of plastic. Um, I'll kind of use diffusers or maybe I'll even shoot it for a softbox or something like that when I'm using external flash, which it's not, that's not practical for, um, you know, obviously going around shooting using like a big softbox, but you can actually get small little softboxes that go over the flash and they're not that big and they're not that intrusive and they, they make the shot look a lot better. You know, having some nice diffusion on there makes a big difference. So it's, um, it, it's worth doing, you know, um, I won't go into too much detail about like the, the setup that I use for it, but um, I, I tend to use a um, transmitter receiver, use this as a, actually um, I don't even use a receiver because this has got one built in, but um, yeah, essentially I'd use it as a wireless setup with uh, a couple of flashes. But you know, if you if you want me to go into more detail about how I'd kind of do um, do like a, a setup for um, photography, just uh, yeah, leave a comment and maybe I could do more videos about this. I think um, most people are probably more photography orientated that are um, kind of watching this content, but you know, uh, more video orientated. Sorry, but it, you know, if you do want to see more photography stuff, then um, yeah, just just let me know because um i like i say i i find for photography you know when i'm when i'm out shooting video with um with the gh6 and the gh5 um I, i'm quite often asked to take pictures as well and i don't want to bring a completely different camera to do all of that so um i just try and get the best i can out of out of um these cameras and like i say i'm you know i'm, I'm pretty happy and the clients have always been pretty happy with uh, the the shots that are produced so it's just a case of um, using using these additional tools that you can get and um, yeah, sort of using them to your advantage. But um, yeah, hopefully that's helped. If it has, give the video a like. Um, if you want to see more about the um, GH6, then uh, please consider checking out the GH6 playlist on this channel. Um, if you do want to see more kind of photography content for the GH6, maybe with some tests and you know additional bits, then kind of let me know and I, I can kind of make some content more kind of geared to that because most things are about video on this channel. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's it really. You know, if you want to see more, just subscribe.